Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Um, yes, I have a, a few uh, concerns and questions on 8.09. Um, the delaying of uh, fall sports until we go back to instruction or a blended model of instruction. Um, we're, uh, we're coaches and cheerleader moderators and uh, everybody else who have, who's a stakeholder, were they contacted or involved in any of the decision-making process? David May Stein, Chief of School Performance. Mr. Gallagher, uh, when the recommendation and decisions were being made to make the re recommendations, they were contacted and informed of the decision. The decision was made based off of the, the board vote um, to go completely remote um, until November 5th, as well as Governor Wolf's strong recommendation to postpone all sports until January. Out of um, an abundance of caution um, for the health and safety of our student athletes, as well as our coaches, uh, we followed suit with bringing this recommendation forward. Um, the coaches um, and support staff were notified of the recommendation coming forward. Um, we do know that um, this is a very difficult recommendation to make um, as um, all of us are trying to balance the, the health and safety of students and staff and the, the um, well-being and development of, of students and student athletes. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Maystein. Now, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say this publicly. I just got off the phone with a uh, coach athletic director, and he said he was never, ever part of any decision making process. And, um, and this is like, you know, I'm going to tell everybody I'm all about safety. This is this last Monday was the first time in 31 years I wasn't on a football field to start a season. And, uh, you know, I, I know how tough this is for everybody, but I, um, when Governor Wolf threw out that, uh, he threw that line out about postponing sports at the, uh, rec making that recommendation. I think that was one of the last sentences of his press conference. And the reason he did that was to throw that back into the PIA's lap as a good political move. And, you know, we're part of the PIAA. And, you know, they're making a suggestion you know, pushing the season back. And um, I really think we should go along with the state, uh, with the PIAA on this one. Um, you know, like I said, I don't think a lot of these coaches were contacted. You know, guys were run, guys and ladies and the band, everybody was running, um, you know, off-season conditioning and, and, and they know. I think we have to give our fall sports hope that we can uh try to uh try to pull this off if we wait till we go back to online i mean to uh in person or hybrid learning that takes us to november november 5th i believe it is and you know you're going to have a very abbreviated schedule you're probably going to lose kids find out today uh, one of our uh, city league kids transferred to one of our competitors out in the wpil and, uh, you know, I, I don't, I think postponing is until, you know, till we go back to school, I think we should give these kids hope and come up, come up with a plan. Um, I've mentioned it before. I know that, uh, when we went home in the, uh, in March, our kids didn't get their physicals. We didn't have our impact tests. And I don't think we, you know, I think we have time to do this and get this season right. Um, once again, I think uh, we should contact, you know, you know, get, get the input for all these coaches. I mean, like a lot of them have signed contracts with WPAL schools and, um, you know, and if, if we I can't can, do it safely, then we cancel it. Yep. But I, I, I can think interject Mr. Gallagher and, and we do have Miss um, Arnold with us. Um, and, and I'm going to ask her to just to, provide a little more information, but 
um, she did hold meeting with faculty managers and, and um, update um, our, our staff on, on what moving forward looked like and, um, and, and the reasons behind it. Um, I, I uh, thank you very much for the feedback that you're providing to us. Um, it, it, I appreciate that. Um, and I'm just gonna ask uh, Ms. Arnold if you can provide um, some additional information on the steps that we took in communicating and reaching out um, to our faculty managers, as well as just some other um, realities that were going around in Pittsburgh with other um, athletic teams and programs. Please. Yes, thank you, Dr. Maystein. Karen Arnold, Director of Athletics. Um, uh, there, I have reached out and talked to some faculty managers. Um, in fact, I've talked to a lot of them. I'm getting text messages every day and having conversations with them. Um, I think they understand um, the, the seriousness behind this with regards to uh, the pandemic. Um, and some of them I have spoken to, they, it seems to me and from my perspective that they agree with this decision. Um, it, it is not an easy decision. Um, I have said before, and I will say publicly here, um, the athlete inside of me um, it, it is saddened by this, um, but we wanna make sure that our staff and our students are safe. Um, that is not to say, um, and a, a, as we go through this, that there are multiple um, scenarios on the table with regards to having a, a possible shortened season. Um, we do have to have three weeks of preseason before we move into uh, play. Um, that is something that I am looking at if we, we come up with a, um, through Dr. Maystein's office, um, a, a set date that we'd like to start by, I can start backtracking from there in terms of building out schedules and working with the coaches and the faculty managers too um, with regards to that. Thank you. What, okay, what, what, you know, I, I'm getting a little bit of different feedback than you from, uh, from people getting in contact with me. And, uh, you know, I even had a guy today, what do I do? You know, do I, you know, am I back to practicing or, or what? And, and I really thought, think that we should have had some type of meeting with all the coaches, a Zoom meeting, everybody likes those, to get people's input. Because, uh, you know, if we play or we don't play, that's fine. But I don't think we got people's input, and I don't think we respect it. The people who put the time in, uh, all coaches. I know that, you know, soccer was running practices, cross country, football. I got the list. We, you know, a majority of our kids play athletes in the, in the fall. That's most of our athletic participations in the fall. And all I think we should do is we should have a plan and, uh, and, and have it out there. It's already, uh, this is heat week, right? This is heat acclimatization week. And, uh, it seems like we don't have a plan and we have to have a plan. You know, the other, other school districts, the, you know, like I said before, the whip they pushed back two weeks, three weeks, the state gave, you know, that they got people going. And I think the way this, uh, the way this is written, we don't start until November 5th. So, so that's, the, I mean, you got November, then you got, you got Thanksgiving. Are, are we opting out of this, the PIA playoffs? That's a decision that's being made um, by the PIA with regards to a conversation, I believe that will happen this Friday when we have a board of directors meeting, that that topic will come up. That we're, Are we opting out? No, 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 I'm saying that the conversation with regards to the PIA moving forward with having um, the state playoff championships, that's something right. that is still part of a discussion. Right, so then we can't start in November if we're still part of the PIA playoffs. We won't be we won't be eligible. So 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 we're off. We're we're, we're basically saying we're not going to participate in participate in the PIA playoffs. Correct. If well, we start I think, November fifth, I think that you know that would be a very late date, and that's something again that I can work with uh, Dr. Maystein's office and in, in having a conversation with regards to a start date and building that out. So, so we, okay, then that, this is good then. So we have to change the, the writing of uh, the writing, the way, the way this reads, 
until we return to full-time instruction or a blended model of instruction, that is November 5th. Well, I defer to Dr. May Stein on that. That, that, That's after nine weeks. So, so so this has to be changed until we, you know, we have more input. So Mr. Mr. Gallagher, um, again, thank you for the suggestions. An immediate next step that we'll do um, is we'll call a coach meeting. Um, we, we again, we did meet with coaches, uh, with faculty managers uh, who oversee coaches, and we share decisions and recommendations moving forward. We will um, call a coaches meeting. Right now, preconditioning is happening. We practicing um, and teams working out right now um, outside of um, within the preconditioning framework is occurring right now. The PAA did push back um, the, um, the uh, heat acclimation, and we are now in the process of um, scheduling uh, physicals for students as our nurses have returned, and we have the proper equipment to do it. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had everything in place before um, we were able to schedule the physicals, but all of that is moving forward uh, because um, right now we're in preconditioning phase. Um, in terms of rewriting um, the resolution, I, I will, um, that recommendation will come from, from Dr. Hamlet. Um, and based on, I guess, other feedback that, that happens at agenda review, our, our primary concern for our student athletes and for our coaches and assistant coaches <clears throat> is that we're able to safely run a program that the communal spread of COVID um, in our region um, is greatly reduced and that we are not placing student athletes or our coaches or assistant coaches at risk. Um, all of us wanna, want the children to participate and compete. That's something that we all want, but we have to make sure that we can do it safely and that everything around us is, is safe. Um, so again, our immediate next step will be um, to have a coaches meeting um, to your point. And again, thank you. Oh, fantastic, doctor. That, I appreciate that. And that's, that's all I'm advocating for, you know, uh, I, I, all about safety, you know, all about safety and, uh, you know, what's right for our kids, right? What's right for our coaches. And um, I just want us, want them to have that element of, of like an expectation that we are doing our best for them. Um, the, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys listening and, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it, and I think if you look at it in a big picture, this can also be beneficial if we're pu pushed back a couple weeks we have our kids a couple extra weeks working out together, doing things that they missed in the spring. And, uh, you know, that they, they will have, all of them will have a successful, hopefully a successful experience if, if it's safe. And thank you guys. I really, really appreciate your listening. So the resolution, is it just to postpone competition or is the resolution including postponing continuing practice? So if we, uh, if we vote on this, next Wednesday and we agree to this resolution, does that mean that practice stops and um, conditioning? Yes, everything would be postponed. Um, and the idea of the postponement is to eliminate the possibility of communal spread, unintentional communal spread to keep everybody safe. Okay. Um, to either extend this one or more, more, more than likely create a new business item to not confuse with sports in case there were specifics related to sports. So if, if I interpret what you just said correctly, um, there would be another uh, board tab coming from administration at some point. Um, as, our, as our guide. So that's actually good because that's going up my, I, I'd actually, because we finished with our pre-personnel early, I had put out a question uh, to, to Mr. Weiss because I wanted to know about extending this to all in-person uh, extracurricular activities. 
and uh, you know, and I was potentially going to make a motion next week to to either extend this one or more 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 than likely create a new business item to not confuse with sports in case there were specifics related to sports. So if if I interpret what you just said correctly, um, there would be another uh, board tab coming from administration at some point to cover other extracurricular activities. Mrs. Kennedy, we'll get back to you on this one. Um, we'll provide more information on that specific question. Thank you, because it, it will definitely inform what I'm going to do next week. And 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 and, and to be and to be clear for folks, I am I I am a big supporter of athletics and extracurricular activities, but I have real concerns on sports or other in-person stuff. I, as some people know, I was participate in athletics in high school, specifically cross country in spring track as a distance specialist. And I couldn't run a race today with a mask covering my mouth and my nose. I couldn't line up for a cross country race with all the people around me because you can't because of social distancing. And I and I could go on with other examples from what I know of other sports, but I as someone who participated in that sport. And 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 I just look at let's look at professional sports. You have the NHL and the NBA operating their abbreviated uh, schedules in a bubble. And as far as I've heard, I, you know, they seem to be doing okay. But then we just have to look at Major League Baseball. It seems like we keep hearing about, a, you know, this person, this club and that club having infections or exposures. And, you know, those, those, those folks are being paid to do that. They were given the chance to opt out on their own and there's other things. But, you know, our students, they're very, they're, they're, they are, um, we shouldn't have to put them or their parents and guardians in the position to figure out what's the right thing to do. In some cases it's peer pressure. In some cases is I just, I've been, I've been locked in my house for how many months and I want to socialize. But at the end of the day, if we lose one person, for a preventable death, that's one person too many. And, and I'm talking about not necessarily just the students or the coaches or teachers, but someone they live with that might have a high risk. And, and could I live with myself if something like that happened? And I, I would be very, I would have a very hard time. And I, and I understand the value of sports and other extracurricular activities. And it hurts me to have to, to do this, but when it comes down to it, it's health before everything else. So for those of you who've been contacting the board, I hear you and I thank you regardless. I've, we've had input on both sides of it, but I really, you know, in my heart, I have to go with what I feel is, is the right thing to do given the times we live in. And I would hope that when uh, the numbers for infections are significantly lower, that we could revisit and and, uh, and I could support a different decision at that point. But at this point, I, I just can't. And that's, and that's it, hurt, it hurts me because I know how valuable the opportunity is. And in some cases you can't get back the opportunity. So, um, so with that, I think I am finished for, for my stuff on, on uh, education agenda. Actually, let me just make one quick pass through on my, my notes right here. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm finished for now. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. W uh, Dr. May Stein and Ms. Sacco for doing my answers. And thank you, Ms. Wilson, for the opportunity to ask my questions. Ms. I, can, I can make a comment here, if I may, please. Yes, go ahead. I talked to Mrs. Kennedy about this issue of extracurriculars and uh, to whatever degree the board is going to consider this, I suggest we have some conversation with uh, Dr. May Stein about such things as band. Uh, I don't know whether you know, some band programs are uh, curriculum-based graded subjects, some aren't, a concert band, things like that. Uh, also with things like chorus and things, uh, of course, from what I've read, 
that type of activity is a big spreader of this uh, virus. Uh, so what I'm saying is if, if we're going to get into, quote, postponing extracurricular activities, we need to be mindful of the fact that some of them, which appear to be activities, are actually uh, courses and graded subjects. So I would suggest we have a conversation. Ms. Fair. Mr. Udin. Mr. Dean, you still there? Do you have any questions or comments? I'm trying to unmute myself. Uh, okay. All right. We hear you. I now. have it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, I guess this question is for uh, David May Stein. Uh, we are watching. Um, the ebb and flow of the coronavirus activity and trying to schedule our plans based on that ebb and flow. Um, the, the, the flu season, the, the fall and winter flu season is expected to collide with the coronavirus and whether or not it collides with the virus going up or the virus going down, we don't know yet. Uh, but my first question is who for the district is monitoring the health pandemic conditions to help us formulate policy on opening and closing and activities like that. Who's, who's watching that uh, with a scientific eye? Um, thank you, Mr. Udin. Um, we have um, uh, a crisis team um, and we use our, our health director, um, Ms. Rayanne Green, and we also use our board doctor, Dr. Gregorio, um, in conjunction with partnering with the Allegheny County Health Department, um, as well as um, through operations of uh, Ms. Capretta and uh, discussions with the executive cabinet. Um, all, all the recommendations that we're bringing to the board um, are based off of um, a lot of discussion and deliberation um, with um, multiple uh, groups so that the recommendations we bring forward are based off of fact, um, current guidelines, um, and local reality of what's happening in our region. So that as being in the position to make decisions and recommendations, <clears throat> we want to make sure that um, the ones we're bringing to you um, are sound and reasonable um, and not putting anybody at risk. Um, we feel that um, as careful as we are with the protocols that we've identified and put in place, the decision trees that we've created <clears throat> that have been reviewed by the Allegheny County Health Department, um, we've received feedback from other health professionals um, are reasonable and sound. Um, we know that things change daily, um, locally and on a national level, <clears throat> as well as the guidelines that we're receiving. And so there's not a day that goes by where we're not talking about what's happening around us and the impact it's having on our students and staff members. And so we're, it's, it, we're constantly watching what's happening. Um, I just want to uh, make sure that we are uh, wrapping our decisions around sports and other activities like that, um, wrapping 
our policy around the science and not wrapping the these the the urge to play around uh our decisions you understand what i mean yes sir and we are wrapping our recommendations around <clears throat> the science and the information that we have available at the time of the recommendation and uh, okay we, we uh I, I i accept that um i just want the also the administration to know that from all of the interaction that I have with various coaches, um, the impression that I get is that the coaches do not feel included in the policy making. They feel that they are just kind of waiting for the decision to come down from on high. And um, my hope when the new athletic director was hired was that she was going to be so inclusive with them that they would feel that they were really a part of the team. Uh, but my information is similar to the information that Mr. Gallagher uh, has reported. And that is that uh, coaches do not feel included and um, when they don't feel included, we all know that they will not do their best job. And so that's just some information uh, you need to stick in your hat. Thank you for that feedback, Mr. Udin. I mean, just uh, Ms. Arnold and I are, are texting and we will be having a coach meeting uh, within the next several work days um, so that um, we can uh, address the feedback we've received today. Um, thank and, you. And thank you very much. Uh, I, in a related uh, question, this may be for uh, either the president or uh, the solicitor. Um, ever since we decided to delay in school learning uh, for the first nine weeks. My feeling, although I've never expressed it, but my feeling has been that that nine weeks will fly by so fast it'll make our heads spin. And with the winter and the fall and winter flu season uh, coming up and coming up against Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, it seems to me that it doesn't make much sense for us to expect that a lot of learning is going to happen before the New Year return after the holidays. And although I would, I would rather base our decisions on a scientific estimate of what what pandemic is we're going to be facing, um, it seems to me that the this wiser plan would be for us to not plan in school um, activity until the first of the year and use that time to, to backfill the learning loss that has occurred since, the, since we closed the schools in the spring and prepare parents and teachers, strengthen their skills in online learning um, because whichever way uh, the pandemic goes, we are going to need to tighten up our skills in, in the use of, of technology as a learning platform. And uh, parents are having a very tough time. I know you're hearing this. Uh, parents are having a very tough time. Uh, the younger the child, 
the more difficult the time they're having um, to keep that kid in a mask, <laughs> keep them in front of the screen. It is very difficult. And if, they're, if the children have special needs, it's even more difficult. Um, so <laughs> I'm wondering then who's, whose responsibility is it to decide to make a recommendation whether or not to do this delay in short bits at a time, or should we get ahead of the, of the game by delaying in-school activity until the first of the year? That's, that's my question. How do, we, how do we make that decision in the best interest of science? Because I know as strong as the urge is for kids to play sports, it's not worth one death. It's not worth one death. And that's, that's the decision that we have to make. Your thoughts on that, please. Mr. David Maystein. Uh, sorry, um, Mr. Udina, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, the, as far as not one death, not one ex extended uh, disabled life is worth the risk. Um, we don't know enough about um, this virus and, and how it's spread yet. It's just too soon. Um, as we are paying attention to science and, and watching what's happening within our region, um, we're better equipped to make decisions that help us ensure everybody's safety. Um, and that's not just students and staff, that's family members as well. Yes. Um, and so as we are, are making decisions, there are checkpoints along the way before we get to uh, November 5th um, in examining, is it, safe to return to your point. Um, I, I think we are uh, very excited at the opportunity that's in front of us at a new way of learning and leveraging technology in a way that we haven't done before um, to access, um, for students to access their own learning um, and opportunity. So, you, you know, if we look at this as an opportunity and not a deficit, um, perhaps there's not going to be learning loss and we're going to have more opportunity to accelerate student learning in ways we haven't anticipated. We just don't know yet, but we, we have to um, not overreact or underreact and, and make sure that we're working together. Um, at the very end of the day, which is a place I like getting to, um, not one life is worth the risk of us um, pushing forward before it's safe. Um, all of our efforts has to be on how we're going to meet the needs of every single student in a synchronous learning environment. And for students well, that were unable uh, to meet those needs in a synchronous environment, what alternatives can we come up with? Um, the reason why I had made reference to uh, the solicitor is because if a change in our policy um, to delay uh, in-person uh, presence until the first of the year requires a, a new um, resolution, um, I, I, I need to know how to proceed with that and which staff or administration I should interact with in order to help inform that resolution. Mr. Weiss. Uh, well, any change in the 
uh, education plan from what has been approved, which was in a remote model for the first nine weeks, uh, would require board action. Uh, it would have to be done by resolution. And uh, the substance of the resolution uh, in terms of the educational uh, recommendation would come from the administration. Uh, we could certainly assist in the drafting of it, but uh, whether district goes to a full remote for the first half of the year is a board decision, just as the decision to move to a remote instruction for the first nine weeks was a board decision. So it have to be also, uh, if that is approved, a, a filing with the PDE, which because it would be a change to our education plan for this year. Thank you. Um, Mr. Maystein, I will be in touch with you um, as we move forward uh, to uh, seek the administration's guidance on um, what factors we ought to consider uh, in making that decision. Yes, sir. Mr. Eugene, I, I, I'll make sure also the appropriate staff, that you work with the appropriate staff to get the information that you need. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, on the online academy and those uh, schools that already use online as a major teaching format, I kind of as assumed that they would be taking the lead in training our system in online, uh, online teaching. Uh, and that seems not to be the case. Is that true? So, so, so I, let me answer that question. This is Dr. Hamlet. So to, to that point, we're referring to POA, Pittsburgh Online Academy. Pittsburgh Online Academy, their teachers are not district teachers, number one. They work for um, another a AIU. But also, the model of POA is not synchronous. It's pretty much on your own, independent. They have call-in um, times to call in for uh, teachers to get help. But a teacher is not in front of those students teaching. So what we're trying to accomplish now is different. We, we're going to a synchronous environment where these teachers will be actually teaching students while the students are logged into the uh, website or, or LMS, I should say. So it's, so it's different. Okay, I accept that. Um, the final issue that I want to get feedback on relates to uh, Dr. Sacco and the Handle with Care, uh, item 607. Yes. And this requires some personal disclosure, uh, Dr. Sacco, uh, of an experience at Clayton that involved my grandson. Um, okay. And it had to do with um, a situation. I don't know if you remember. I, I have discussed this. This. Uh, with board members in the past, but there was a situation where the student was told to leave the classroom because he would not pay attention. He kept putting his head down and going to sleep. The teacher comes out of the classroom and in this while the teacher is reprimanding him for his behavior inside the classroom, he tried to walk away. The teacher grabbed him and slammed him against the lockers. And he tries to get away and the teacher is restraining him. Now, there was no aggression toward the teacher before he tried to walk away and was restrained. So the question, well, the teacher couldn't fully restrain him. And then another person had to be called from down the hall. Um, in depth and get an answer for you. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Thank you, Miss uh, Miss Falls. Thank you, Miss Wilson. Um, first, I want to start off by saying that um, my idea about thinking I could get better reception outside um, didn't work. Um, so I probably have been off uh, line maybe half the time, if not more. So I will have to review this meeting from beginning to end again because um, I could not hear very important questions as well as very important answers. So I wanna make that very clear right up front. So um, I, I won't be doing that side again. A um, couple of things I just wanna say that um, I, I agree with Mr. Udin and, and his sentiments about um, following through with who, when, where, and how um, for, for learning and for, um, I said it in the very beginning and gosh, I wish I, I, I hadn't because I feel like I jinxed everything. Um, I said, I don't think we're going to be back to school until after the first of the year. And um, I really fear that. And one of the reasons why is exactly what Mr. Dean said, we are now going to hit the flu season. And um, the reason why that scares me so much is because we don't really know what that means. In addition to, um, I know my pharmacy keeps saying to me, when are you going to get your flu shot? When are you going to get your flu shot? So um, it's, it's, it's coming. Um, all the medical people are getting prepared as best they can, but we don't know where that's going to lead. So um, I just really hope that I didn't jinx things by saying we're not going to be back till after the first of the year. But I, I, I agree with Mr. Dean in, in wanting to follow up with that and how that's all going to occur. Um, the other thing, again, um, I want to salute Mr. Gallagher um, on his tireless um, effort um, on behalf of the coaches and um, the sports uh, arena uh, of our school district. Um, to my knowledge, I've not been involved with someone who's been so dedicated to um, trying to stay in the middle of the fence and, and juggle all these things like Mr. Gallagher has. Um, in relationship to being a part of and now being on the other side, trying to balance all of this. Um, I do think that before this can be put before myself for a vote, I need, I would need to see the um, 8.09 kind of revised because um, the, the actual stating of postponement um, scares me a little bit too. But maybe that's something that, that will come up at a later point in time and won't even require um, any further uh, discussion if, it, if the wording is revised. Um, and um, let me see if there's anything else. Um, I don't know if there's anything else, but if there is, I will follow up on it because like I said, I did miss important questions and important answers. Um, but I do thank you for giving me this time to at least express that much. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Sure, thank you, Ms. Ms. Falls. Um, before we go on to business, Ms. Harbin asked that she could respond one thing and then we're going to move into business. Go ahead, Ms. Harbin. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Um, yeah, I just wanted to respond to the 